Unit 8. Merriam-Webster's Vocabulary Builder. Port. Comes from the Latin verb portar, meaning, to carry. Thus, something portable can be carried around. A porter carries your luggage, whether through a train station or high into the Himalayas. When we transport something, we have it carried from one place to another. And goods for export are carried away to another country. Portage. The carrying of boats or goods overland from one body of water to another, also, a regular route for such carrying. The only portage on the whole canoe route would be the one around the Great Waterfall on our second day. Portage was borrowed from French back in the 15th century to mean, carrying, transporting, or, freight, and it has kept its simple carrying sense to the present day. But its first known use in its carrying of boat sense came in 1698, and the obstacle that the canoes couldn't be steered over was none other than Niagara Falls. Though canoes are much lighter today than they used to be, a long portage that includes a lot of camping gear can still test a camper's strength. Portfolio 1. A flat case for carrying documents or artworks. 2. The investments owned by a person or organization. In those days, a graphic artist who had recently moved to New York would just schlep his portfolio around to every magazine office in the city. Portfolio is partly based on the Latin folium, meaning leaf, sheet. A portfolio usually represents a portable showcase of your talents. Today actual portfolios are used less than they used to be by artists, since most commercial artists have a website dedicated to showing off their art. But portfolio in its other common meaning is extremely common. Not so long ago, a broker would keep each of his or her client's investments in a separate notebook or portfolio. Today, the investment portfolio, like an artist's portfolio, usually takes the form of a web page, even though everyone still uses the same old word. Comport. 1. To be in agreement with. 2. To behave. This new evidence comports with everything we know about what happened that night. With its prefix com, with, the Latin word comporter meant, to bring together. So it's easy to see how in English we could say that a college's policy comports with state law, or that a visit to your parents doesn't comport with your other weekend plans, or that your aunt and uncle won't listen to anything on TV that doesn't comport with their prejudices. The behave sense of the word comes through French, and its essential meaning is how a person carries him or herself. So you may say, for instance, that your 17-year-old comported himself well, for once, at the wedding reception, or that an ambassador always comports herself with dignity, that is, her comportment is always dignified, or that your class comported itself in a way that was a credit to the school. Deportment Manner of conducting oneself socially at social events she would constantly sneak glances at Alexandra, in quiet admiration of her elegant and graceful deportment. We've all seen pictures of girls walking around balancing books on their heads in an effort to achieve the poise of a princess or a film star. Classes in deportment were once a standard part of a young lady's upbringing, offered in all the girls' colleges, and you can still take private deportment classes, where you'll learn about posture and body language, how to move, sit, stand, shake hands, dress, drink and eat, and much more. But deportment isn't all about refined female grace. In fact, deport is often used as a synonym for comport, but usually in a positive way, thus, people are often said to deport themselves well, confidently, with dignity, like gentlemen or ladies, and so on. Pend Comes from the Latin verb pendera, meaning, to hang, or, to weigh. In the Roman era, weighing something large often required hanging it from a hook on one side of the balance scales. We find the root in English words like appendix, referring to that useless and sometimes troublesome tube that hangs from the intestine, or that section at the back of some books that might contain some useful additional information. Pendant Something that hangs down, especially as an ornament. Around her neck she was wearing the antique French pendant he had given her, with its three rubies set in silver filigree. Most pendants are purely decorative. But a pendant may also hold a picture or a lock of hair of a lover or a child. And, perhaps because they hang protectively in front of the body and near the heart, pendants have often had symbolic and magical purposes. Thus, a pendant may be a charm or amulet, 
or its gems or metals may be felt to have health-giving properties. In architecture, a pendant is an ornament that hangs down from a structure, but unlike a necklace pendant it's usually solid and inflexible. Append. To add as something extra. She appended to the memo a list of the specific items that the school was most in need of. Append is a somewhat formal word. Lawyers, for example, often speak of appending items to other documents, and lawmakers frequently append small bills to big ones, hoping that everyone will be paying attention only to the main part of the big bill and won't notice. When we append a small separate section to the end of a report or a book, we call it an appendix. But in the early years of email, the words we decided on were attach and attachment, probably because appendixes are thought of as unimportant, whereas the attachment is often the whole reason for sending an email. Appendage 1. Something joined on to a larger or more important body or thing. 2. A secondary body part, such as an arm or a leg. She often complained that she felt like a mere appendage of her husband when they socialized with his business partners. Appendix isn't the only noun that comes from append. Unlike appendix, appendage doesn't suggest the end of something, but simply something attached. The word is often used in biology to refer to parts of an animal's body, an insect's antennae, mouthparts, or wings, for example. The appendages of some animals will grow back after they've been removed, a salamander, for example, can regrow a finger, and the tiny sea squirt can regrow all its appendages, and even its brain. Suspend. 1. To stop something, or to force someone to give up some right or position, for a limited time. 2. To hang something so that it is free on all sides. The country has been suspended from the major trade organizations, and the effects on its economy are beginning to be felt. When something is suspended, it is left hanging, it is neither in full operation nor permanently ended. Suspense is a state of uncertainty and maybe anxiety. When we watch a play or movie, we enjoy experiencing a suspension of disbelief, that is, we allow ourselves to believe we're watching reality, even though we aren't truly fooled, suspension can also mean physical hanging, thus, in a suspension bridge, the roadway actually hangs from huge cables. When some substance is in suspension, its particles are hanging in another substance, mixed into it but not actually dissolved, like fine sand in water, or sea spray in the air at the seashore. Pan comes from a Greek word meaning all, as an English prefix, it can also mean completely, whole, or general. A panoramic view is a complete view in every direction. A pantheon is a temple dedicated to all the gods of a religion. A pandemic outbreak of a disease may not affect the entire human population, but enough to produce a catastrophe. Panacea A remedy for all ills or difficulties, cure all. Educational reform is sometimes viewed as the panacea for all of society's problems. Panacea comes from a Greek word meaning all healing, and panacea was the goddess of healing. In the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, alchemists who sought to concoct the elixir of life, which would give eternal life, and the philosopher's stone, which would turn ordinary metals into gold, also labored to find the panacea. But no such medicine was ever found, just as no solution to all of a society's difficulties has ever been found. Thus, panacea is almost always used to criticize the very idea of a total solution, there's no panacea for the current problems plaguing Wall Street. Pandemonium A wild uproar or commotion Pandemonium erupted in the stadium as the ball shot past the goalie into the net. In John Milton's Paradise Lost, the fallen Satan has his heralds proclaim a solemn council forthwith to be held at Pandemonium, the high capital of Satan and his peers. Milton got the name for his capital of hell, where Satan gathered together all his demons, by linking Pan with the Latin word demonium, evil spirit. For later writers, pandemonium became a synonym for hell itself, since hell was then often seen as a place of constant noise and confusion, but also for any wicked and lawless place. Nowadays it's used to refer to the uproar itself rather than the place where it occurs. Pantheism A system of belief that regards God as identical with the forces and laws of the universe. 
most of her students seemed to accept a vague kind of pantheism, without any real belief that God had ever appeared in human form. Pantheistic ideas, and most importantly the belief that God is equal to the universe, its physical matter, and the forces that govern it, are found in the ancient books of Hinduism, in the works of many Greek philosophers, and in later works of philosophy and religion over the centuries. Much modern New Age spirituality is pantheistic. But most Christian thinkers reject pantheism because it makes God too impersonal, doesn't allow for any difference between the creation and the creator, and doesn't seem to allow for humans to make meaningful moral choices. Panoply 1. A magnificent or impressive array. 2. A display of all appropriate accessory items. The full panoply of a royal coronation was a thrilling sight for the throngs of sidewalk onlookers and the millions of television viewers. The fully armed Greek soldier was an impressive sight, even if Greek armor never became as heavy as that of medieval knights on horseback, who couldn't possibly have marched in such outfits. Panoplia was the Greek word for the full suit of armor, and the English panoply originally likewise referred to the full suit of armor worn by a soldier or knight. Today panoply may refer to full ceremonial dress or lavish ceremonial decoration of any kind. And it can also refer to striking spectacle of almost any kind, the breathtaking panoply of autumn foliage, or the stirring panoply of a military parade, for example. Extra is Latin for outside or beyond. So anything extraterrestrial or extragalactic takes place beyond the Earth or the galaxy. Something extravagant, such as an extravaganza, goes way beyond the normal. An extra is naturally a word itself, a shortening of extraordinary, beyond the ordinary. Extradite. To deliver an accused criminal from one place to another where the trial will be held. Picked up by the Colorado police for burglary, he's being extradited to Mississippi to face trial for murder. Extradition from one state to another is generally a straightforward process. But extradition may become more complicated when two countries are involved, even though most countries have signed treaties stating that they will send criminals to the country where they are wanted. Many countries often won't send their own citizens to another country for trial, countries that don't permit the death penalty may not agree to send a suspect back to face such a penalty, and most countries won't extradite someone accused of political crimes. When extradition seems unlikely, a country may actually kidnap someone from another country, but this is illegal and rare. Extrapolate to extend or project facts or data into an area not known in order to make assumptions or to predict facts or trends. Economists predict future buying trends partly by extrapolating from current economic data. Scientists worry about the greenhouse effect because they have extrapolated the rate of carbon dioxide buildup and predicted that its effect on the atmosphere will become increasingly severe. On the basis of their extrapolations, they have urged governments and businesses to limit factory and automobile emissions. Notice that it's acceptable to speak of extrapolating existing data, to produce new data, extrapolating from existing data, to produce new data, or extrapolating new data, from existing data, in other words, it isn't easy to use this word wrong. Extrovert A person mainly concerned with things outside him or herself, a sociable and outgoing person. These parties are always full of loud extroverts, and I always find myself hiding in a corner with my drink. Extrovert, sometimes spelled extrovert, means basically, turned outward, that is, toward things outside oneself. The word was coined by the eminent psychologist C. G. Jung in the early 20th century. The opposite personality type, in Jung's view, was the introvert. Extroverts seem to be favored by societies such as ours, even though introverts seem to be on average more mentally gifted. Psychologists have said that the only personality traits that can be identified in newborn infants are shyness and lack of shyness, which are fairly close to, but not really the same as, introversion and extroversion. Extraneous 1. Existing or coming from the outside. 2. Not forming an essential part, irrelevant. Be sure your essays are well focused, with any discussion of extraneous topics kept to a minimum. Extraneous and strange both come from the same Latin word, extraneous, which basically meant, external, or, coming from outside. But unlike strange, extraneous is a slightly formal word, 
often used by scientists and social scientists. Researchers always try to eliminate extraneous factors, or extraneous variables, from their studies. A researcher conducting a psychological test, for example, would try to make sure that the people were tested under the same conditions and were properly divided according to gender, age, health, and so on. Thought comes from the Greek word for light. Photography uses light to create an image on film or paper, and a photocopy is an image made by using light and tiny electrically charged ink particles. Photoelectric involving an electrical effect produced by the action of light or other radiation. They wanted to avoid the kind of smoke detector that uses radioactive materials, so they've installed the photoelectric kind instead. The photoelectric effect occurs when light, or similar radiation such as X-rays, falls on a material such as a metal plate and causes it to emit electrons. The discovery of the photoelectric effect led to important new theories about matter, and to a Nobel Prize for Albert Einstein. Photoelectric cells, or photocells, are used in burglar alarm light detectors and garage door openers, both employ a beam of light that is broken when something moves across it, and also to play soundtracks on movie film, where a light beam shines through the soundtrack encoded on the film and is read by the photocells. Photovoltaic Involving the direct generation of electricity when sunlight or other radiant energy falls on the boundary between dissimilar substances, such as two different semiconductors. Photovoltaic technology is being applied to thin film that can produce as much energy as solar cells while using far less semiconducting material. The voltaic part of photovoltaic comes from the name of Alessandro Volta, inventor of the electric battery. Thus, unlike photoelectric cells, which use electricity for certain small tasks, photovoltaic, or PV, cells actually produce electricity. Solar cells, the standard type of photovoltaic cells, often called simply photocells, operate without chemicals and with no moving parts to create energy directly from sunlight. Much research is now being done on creating an alternative technology, solar film, which could be stuck onto almost any surface, or possibly even sprayed on. Photon A tiny particle or bundle of radiant energy The idea that light consists of photons is difficult until you begin to think of a ray of light as being caused by a stream of tiny particles. It was Albert Einstein who first theorized that the energy in a light beam exists in small bits or particles, and scientists today know that light sometimes behaves like a wave, somewhat like sound or water, and sometimes like a stream of particles. The energies of photons range from high-energy gamma rays and X-rays down to low-energy infrared and radio waves, though all travel at the same speed. The amazing power of lasers is the result of a concentration of photons that have been made to travel together in order to hit their target at the same time. Photosynthesis The process by which green plants use light to produce organic matter from carbon dioxide and water. Sagebrush survives in harsh climates because it's capable of carrying on photosynthesis at very low temperatures. The Greek roots of photosynthesis combine to produce the basic meaning to put together with the help of light. Photosynthesis is what first produced oxygen in the atmosphere billions of years ago, and it's still what keeps it there. Sunlight splits the water molecules, made of hydrogen and oxygen, held in a plant's leaves and releases the oxygen in them into the air. The leftover hydrogen combines with carbon dioxide to produce carbohydrates, which the plant uses as food, as do any animals or humans who might eat the plant. Luc comes from the Latin noun lux, light, and the verb lucera, to shine or glitter. In ancient Rome, Lucifer, meaning light bearer, was the name given to the morning star, but the name was eventually transferred by Christians to Satan. This tradition, which dates back to the period before Christ, said that Lucifer had once been among the angels but had wanted to be the great light in the sky, and for his pride had been cast out of heaven and thus became the opponent of everything good. Lucid 1. Very clear and easy to understand. 2. Able to think clearly. On his last visit he had noticed that his elderly mother hadn't seemed completely lucid. Mental lucidity is easy to take for granted when we're young, though alcohol, drugs, and psychological instability can confuse the mind at any age. 
We all hope to live to 100 with our mental abilities intact, which is entirely possible, avoiding the condition called dementia, which includes the well-known Alzheimer's disease, often involves a combination of decent genes, physical and mental activity, and a good diet. Writing lucidly, on the other hand, can take a lot of work at any age, you've probably had the experience of trying to read a set of instructions and wondering if the writer even grew up speaking English. Elucidate To clarify by explaining, explain. A good doctor should always be willing to elucidate any medical jargon he or she uses. The basic meaning of elucidate is, to shed light on. So when you elucidate, you make transparent or clear something that had been murky or confusing. Elucidation of a complex new healthcare policy may be a challenge. Elucidation of the terms of use for a credit card may be the last thing its provider wants to do. The physicist Carl Sagan had a gift for elucidating astronomical science to a large audience, his lucid explanations making clear how stars are born and die and how the universe may have begun. Lucubration 1. Hard and difficult study. 2. The product of such study. Our professor admitted that he wasn't looking forward to reading through any more of our lucubrations on novels that no one enjoyed. Lucubration came to mean, hard study, because it originally meant study done by lamplight, and in a world without electric lights, such study was likely to be the kind of hard work that would only a dedicated student like Abe Lincoln would make a habit of. The word has a literary feel to it, and it's often used with a touch of sarcasm. Translucent. Partly transparent, allowing light to pass through without permitting objects beyond to be seen clearly. Architects today often use industrial glass bricks in their home designs, because translucent walls admit daylight while guarding privacy. With its prefix trans, meaning through, translucent describes material that light shines through without making anything on the other side clearly visible, unlike a transparent material. Frosted glass, often used in bathroom windows, is translucent, as is stained glass. Red wine in a crystal goblet, when held before a candle in a dark corner of a quiet restaurant, usually proves to be translucent as well. More slash mort comes from Latin words meaning to die and death. A mortuary is a place where dead bodies are kept until burial, and a post-mortem examination is one conducted on a recently dead body. The Latin phrase, memento mori, means, remember that you must die, so a memento mori is the name we give to a reminder of death, the skulls you can find carved on gravestones in old cemeteries are examples. Mortality 1. The quality or state of being alive and therefore certain to die. 2. The number of deaths that occur in a particular time or place. Mortality rates were highest among those who those who lived closest to the plant. Young people tend to assume they will never die, but a person's sense of his or her mortality generally increases year by year and often increases greatly after a serious accident or illness. Still, many people refuse to change behaviors that would improve their chances of living into old age. Mortality rates are calculated by government agencies, insurance companies, and medical researchers. Infant mortality rates, the rate at which infants die in childbirth, provide a good indicator of a country's overall health. In recent years, the rates in countries like Iceland, Singapore, and Japan have been much better than in the U.S. Moribund. 1. In the process of dying or approaching death. 2. Inactive or becoming outmoded. Church attendance in Britain has fallen in recent years, but no one would say the Anglican Church is moribund. Moribund is still sometimes used in its original literal sense of, approaching death, but it's much more often used to describe things. When the economy goes bad, we hear about moribund mills and factories and towns, the economy itself may even be called moribund. Critics may speak of the moribund state of poetry, or lament the moribund record or newspaper industry. Amortize. To pay off, something such as a mortgage, by making small payments over a period of time. For tax purposes, they chose to amortize most of the business's startup costs over a three-year period. Amortize is most common as a legal term, and many of us first come across it when we take out a mortgage or start a business. 
Financial officers and tax lawyers can choose how to legally amortize various types of business expenses, some of which may seem much better than others. In mortgage amortization, much of what you pay month by month is actually interest on the mortgage debt, especially at the beginning. So what does amortizing have to do with death? Basically, to amortize a debt means to kill it slowly over time. Mortify. 1. To subdue or deaden, the body, especially by self-discipline or self-inflicted pain. 2. To embarrass greatly. Our 14-year-old is mortified whenever he sees us dancing, especially if any of his school friends are around. Mortify once actually meant, put to death, but no longer. Its deadened sense is most familiar to us in the phrase, mortifying the flesh, which refers to a custom once followed by devout Christians, who would starve themselves, deprive themselves of every comfort, and even whip themselves in order to subdue their bodily desires and punish themselves for their sins. But the most common use of mortify today is the humiliate sense, its connection with death is still apparent when we speak of, dying of embarrassment. Trough Comes from the Greek trophy, meaning, nourishment. This particular trough root doesn't show up in many everyday English words, the trough in words like trophy, apostrophe, and catastrophe has a different meaning, but instead tends to appear in scientific terms. Atrophy 1. Gradual loss of muscle or flesh, usually because of disease or lack of use. 2. A decline or degeneration. After a month in a hospital bed, my father required a round of physical therapy to deal with his muscular atrophy. From its literal Greek roots, atrophy would mean basically, lack of nourishment. Although the English word doesn't usually imply any lack of food, it always refers to a wasting away. Those who have been bedridden for a period of time will notice that their muscles have atrophied. And muscular atrophy is a frequent result of such diseases as cancer and AIDS. We also use atrophy in a much more general sense. After being out of work a few years, you may find your work skills have atrophied, someone who's been living an isolated life may discover the same thing about his or her social skills, and a democracy can atrophy when its citizens cease to pay attention to how they're being governed. Hypertrophy. 1. Excessive development of an organ or part. 2. Exaggerated growth or complexity. Opponents claimed that the Defense Department, after years of being given too much money by the Congress, was now suffering from hypertrophy. When the prefix hyper, above, beyond, see hyper, is joined to trophy, we get the opposite of atrophy. An organ or part becomes hypertrophic when it grows so extremely that its function is affected. Muscle hypertrophy is common in men who do strength training, and is often harmless, but extreme muscle hypertrophy generally involves taking steroids, which can do great damage to the body. Hypertrophy of the heart sounds as if it might be healthy, but instead it's usually a bad sign. As the example sentence shows, hypertrophy, like atrophy, can be used in non-medical ways as well. Dystrophy Any of several disorders involving the nerves and muscles, especially muscular dystrophy. The most common of the muscular dystrophies affects only males, who rarely live to the age of 40. Since the prefix dys means bad or difficult, see dys, dystrophy is always a negative term. Originally it meant, a condition caused by improper nutrition, but today the term is instead used for a variety of other conditions, particularly conditions that noticeably affect the muscles. Of the many types of muscular dystrophy, the best known is Duchenne's, a terrible disease that strikes about 1 in 3,300 males and produces severe wasting of the muscles. However, the muscular dystrophies generally affect many other organs and systems as well. And the other dystrophies, which tend to involve the eyes or hands, don't much resemble the muscular dystrophies. Eutrophication The process by which a body of water becomes enriched in dissolved nutrients. Local naturalists are getting worried about the increasing eutrophication they've been noticing in the lake. Eutrophication, which comes from the Greek eutrophos, well-nourished, CEU, has become a major environmental problem. Nitrates and phosphates, especially from lawn fertilizers, run off the land into rivers and lakes, promoting the growth of algae and other plant life, which take oxygen from the water, causing the death of fish and mollusks. 
Cow manure, agricultural fertilizer, detergents, and human waste are often to blame as well. In the 1960s and 70s, the eutrophication of Lake Erie advanced so extremely that it became known as the Dead Lake. In many areas of the oceans worldwide, some more than 20,000 square miles in extent, have become dead zones, where almost no life of any kind exists. Words from Mythology and History Aeolian Harp A box-shaped instrument with strings that produce musical sounds when the wind blows on them. Poets have long been fascinated by the Aeolian harp, the only instrument that produces music without a human performer. According to the ancient Greeks, Aeolus was the king or guardian of the winds. He lived in a cave with his many, many sons and daughters, and sent forth whatever wind Zeus asked for. When Odysseus stopped there on his way home from Troy, he received a bag of winds to fill his sails. But while he was asleep, his men, thinking it contained treasure, opened the bag and released the raging winds, which blew their ships all the way back to their starting point. An Aeolian harp produces enchanting harmonies when the wind passes over it. According to Homer, it was the god Hermes who invented the harp, by having the wind blow over the dried sinews attached to the shell of a dead tortoise. Sinusure. 1. A guide. 2. A center of attention. Near the club's dance floor, a young rock star was hanging out, the sinusure of a small crowd of admirers. In Greek kinesura means, dog's tail, and in Latin sinusura came to mean the constellation Ursa Minor, little bear, what we usually call the little dipper. The first star on the dog's or bear's tail, or the dipper's handle, is Polaris, the north star, long used as a guide for seamen or travelers lost on a clear night, since, Unlike the other stars, it always remains in the same position in the northern sky, while the other constellations, and even the rest of its own constellation, slowly revolve around it. Since Sinusura also came to mean the star itself, the English Sinusure now may mean both guide and center of attention. Laconic Using extremely few words Action film scripts usually seem to call for laconic leading men who avoid conversation but get the job done. Ancient Sparta was located in the region of Greece known as Laconia, and the Greek word lakonikos could mean both Laconian and Spartan. The disciplined and militaristic Spartans, the finest warriors of their time, were known for putting up with extreme conditions without complaint. So English writers who knew their ancient history came to use laconic to describe the habit of saying few words. Today we can refer not only to a laconic person but also to laconic wit, a laconic answer, or a laconic phrase, such as, men of few words require few laws, uttered by a Spartan king. Mnemonic Having to do with the memory, assisting the memory. Sales training courses recommend various mnemonic devices as a way of remembering people's names. The Greek word for memory is mnemosyne, and mnemosyne was the goddess of memory and the mother of the muses. So something that helps the memory is a mnemonic aid, or simply a mnemonic. Such traditional mnemonic devices as, every good boy does fine, for the notes on the lines of a musical staff with a treble clef, or the, 30 days hath September, rhyme help to recall simple rules or complicated series that might otherwise slip away. For extra credit, guess what, King Henry died drinking chocolate milk, or, King Philip could only find green socks, stands for. Notice that the first M isn't pronounced, unlike in other m -E words such as amnesia and amnesty. Platonic. 1. Relating to the philosopher Plato or his teachings. 2. Involving a close relationship from which romance and sex are absent. The male and female leads in sitcoms often keep their relationship platonic for the first few seasons, but romance almost always wins out in the end. The philosopher Plato presented his theories in a series of dramatic conversations between Socrates and other people, now called the Platonic Dialogues. Among many other important concepts, he taught that everything here on earth is a pale imitation, like a shadow, of its ideal form, and this ideal form is now often called the platonic form. But platonic is probably usually seen in the phrase, platonic love. Because Socrates, 
through Plato, teaches that the philosophical person should turn his passion for a lover into appreciation of beauty and love of a higher power and of the universe, close but non-sexual friendship between two people who might be thought to be romantically attracted is today known as platonic love or friendship. Sapphic. 1. Lesbian. 2. Relating to a poetic verse pattern associated with Sappho. The Roman poets Catullus and Horace composed wonderful love poems in sapphic verse. The poet Sappho wrote poems of self-reflection but also of passion, some of it directed to the women attending the school she conducted on the Greek island of Lesbos around 600 BC. Even though most of the poems survive only as fragments, they have been greatly admired for many centuries. They were written in an original rhythmical pattern, which has become known as sapphic verse. Later admirers, such as the Roman poets Catullus and Horace, honored her by adopting the sapphic meter for their own poetry. Because of Sappho, the island of Lesbos also gave its name to lesbianism, which writers often used to call sapphic love. Socratic Having to do with the philosopher Socrates or with his teaching method, in which he systematically questioned the student in conversation in order to draw forth truths. She challenges her students by using the Socratic method, requiring them to think and respond constantly in every class. Socrates lived and taught in Athens in the 5th century BC, but left no writings behind, so all we know of him comes through the works of his disciple Plato, almost all of which claim to be accounts of Socrates' conversations with others. Today Socrates is best remembered for his method of teaching by asking increasingly difficult questions, the so-called Socratic method. This generally involves the use of Socratic induction, a way of gradually arriving at generalizations through a process of questions and answers, and Socratic irony, in which the teacher pretends ignorance while questioning his students skillfully to make them aware of their errors in understanding. Solicism 1. A grammatical mistake in speaking or writing. 2. A blunder in etiquette or proper behavior. The poor boy committed his first solecism immediately on entering by tracking mud over the Persian rug in the dining room. In ancient Asia Minor, now Turkey, there was a city called Soloi where the inhabitants spoke Greek that was full of grammatical errors. So errors in grammar, and later also small errors in formal social behavior, came to be known, at least by intellectuals, as solecisms. The British magazine The Economist publishes a list of solecisms to be avoided in its prose, including the use of try and when you mean try to, hone in on, when you mean home in on, and so forth. Social solecisms, such as mentioning how inferior the wine is to someone who turns out to be the hostess's sister, are more commonly called by a French name, faux pas. 